Then we'll come on to screen printing, which is quite popular because it's a very versatile process. The process of printing on glass using uh, silk screens is called screen printing. Screens can be from other materials as well. It's essentially a stencil method of printing where you impose a design on the screen and uh, that design is then passed on to the glass. Certain sections of the silk mesh will become impermeable or the ink will not be allowed to pass. And there would be other sections where the ink can pass. So the design is made in such a way that the areas where the ink can pass, the design goes through and the other areas the ink cannot pass through. So you take a rubber squeezy and you run it through the silk mesh and the ink will flow through the transparent areas. So it's a long process to do screen printing and it starts with making the screens. The screens have to be made with a positive in mind. It's not a negative, it's a positive. I'll explain in the next slide. So you can print patterns, designs with screen printing. You can even do multicolor prints. So you can use a simple or complex software to make these prints and you can have many, many options that you can achieve. So you have to make a positive to begin with. A good positive is made with the dark ink, which doesn't let the light pass through it on a transparent sheet of photographic paper. So the positive is different than a negative. A camera negative is where the colors are inverted. In this case, it's not so. In a positive, the colors are not inverted. Essentially, the dark portions are the ones which will block the light and these are the areas where the ink will pass through. So the area where you need the ink to pass through need to be dark. That's why it's called a positive and not a negative. We'll go through the process of making the positive. You can make a positive by hand as well. There are several artistic people who want to create art by doing this by hand. As I explained, positive is nothing but putting a black ink on a photographic paper. So you want to block the light that's going through. But more often than not, it's done through machines. There are a lot of printers, uh, wide format flat jet printers available, where you can make your patterns and then transfer it onto these transparent sheets where the accuracy can be maintained and good quality films are available to do so. It's also important to save the positives. Now, positives cost a lot of money. These are wide format uh, positives, not easy to match many positives together, such as an offset printing. So it's essential to have a good storage area for the positives. And in certain cases, you can have the same design go on to the same screens again and again. So you need to be able to use the positive again. So make sure that you use a good film and you have good storage conditions for the positives. When we start the screen printing process, we have to select the mesh. So the mesh selection will depend on the pattern that you're going to print. So certain patterns will have a very fine print and there would be others which have large solid areas or areas where there is a lot of ink that needs to be transferred. So based on the design pattern, you have to select a mesh. The mesh can be measured in lines per inch, which is essentially how many threads are going in an inch and which will determine the resolution of the print that you are going to do. The more the number of threads are, the lesser amount of ink will be deposited through them. That means if you've got a 120 mesh, that means there are more threads per inch, you will have a finer print and less ink will go through. And if you have a 60 lines per inch, then more uh, ink will go through. This will also mean that the printing will not be that sharp. So it's always a balance. So you have to choose the mesh according to the pattern that is being printed. So there's a no one size fits all kind of a condition. You have to have various mesh sizes available, different widths available in order to get the right results. So the first uh, process is the mesh selection. Then you essentially prepare the frame. So you put this mesh that you have selected on an aluminum frame. We've used a wide aluminum frame because we want to hold it together well. And what we've used is a series of pistons which will stretch the fabric or the mesh 
in such a way that there is even distribution of tension on the glass and uh, this will result in an equal opening area all across the frame. If the opening area of the frame is not the same across the length and the width of the frame, you will have more and less ink deposition on different areas. One of the tools which is uh, showing uh, uh, measurement of the tension on the cloth. So, you have to measure that in the center and on the sides the tension is the same. Once you have stretched the cloth, you apply what is essentially a glue to paste it with the frame and then you let it dry and achieve a even amount of tension and then you cut it through and you get the frame ready. So, even and equal tension is the key for this process and having a wide aluminum frame will always help. If you have got rod or a pipe kind of a frame, it will bend. So, do not save money on the frame because that will affect the screen printing. I have seen a lot of wooden frames, a lot of frames which use pipes. These will essentially flex in the middle and you will get an uneven print. The lines will not go straight. So, if you want the lines to go straight, use a thick aluminum frame and paste the screen on it. So, you get an equal tension and equal pressure on all sides. Then you have to coat what is light sensitive or a photo emulsion is something which blocks the screen and this particular emulsion is light sensitive. So, wherever light touches the emulsion, the emulsion will become hard and wherever the light does not uh, touch the emulsion, the emulsion will wash away. So, uh, the purpose of the emulsion is to create the positive or create the frame where the ink will pass through the areas where the positive that you just made black portions will not get the light and the other areas which will get the light will solidify. So, you have to coat the emulsion evenly on the frame and it has to be consistent because if it is not consistent, it will not during the exposing process, it will uh, solidify at different times. So, we will come to the exposing uh, part and we will understand this a little bit more. So, first you have to apply the emulsion, you spread a thin layer of the emulsion on both sides of the screen. This can be done with a scoop coater and you can have uh, automatic machines to do it. For smaller frames that may not be essential, but for larger frames where manual coating may not be consistent. So, their machines are important and process is easily explained in the slide that you coat it and support it side down and you have to pour a thin layer of emulsion on it. There are various kinds of emulsions available and the coating thickness is also uh, mentioned according to the emulsion. This is another image of how the emulsion is uh, coated. The edges are prone uh, to leave any holes or gaps. If you have any gaps in the emulsion, then uh, the frame will be compromised. So, uh, this is telling you that you have to take care that all throughout the frame, the emulsion has to be coated even on the edges. Otherwise, you will have some ink go through areas where you do not want it to go through. Once the emulsion is coated, you have to dry it in a dark location. So, you have to have a dark room. Exposing it to light right now will mean that it will start to solidify. So, this is essential. You need to have a good dark room. And you need to dry it with air if you have a few blowers going. So, the sooner it dries up, the better and the thickness of the coat is important. So, once again, you, do, you want to keep it flat. You do not want it at an angle because uh, if it is at angle, it will flow through on one side. So, you dry it off and once it dried up, then you go on to the next process, which is putting the positive on the frame itself. So, now, we have already selected the mesh, we have already pasted it on the frame, we have coated with the emulsion. Now, we put the positive on top of the emulsion. So, we can put a large piece of glass on top of the positive and as is seen in the image, we then put it in vacuum machine where air will come out and essentially the positive will stick on to the frame surface and now it will be exposed to the light which is photosensitized. In the next process, you put the light onto the frame and now the exposing times will vary according to the patterns, will vary according to the emulsion that is being used. There can be exposing, uh, they are normally yellow in color. So, there are various variations to the same, but essentially you expose 
the frame with light and uh, stronger light will take 15 odd minutes uh, for the screen to expose. There are some uh, UV uh, lights as well which will uh, speed up the process. Once the screen is exposed, you need to wash it. When you'll wash the frame, the areas where the light has gone through to the emulsion will solidify and the other areas uh, where the light has not been able to pass through will wash off. So this can be done with regular tap water and you have to sort of check it with light. If there are certain holes within the emulsion, you need to plug it right now. That means if there are areas where, you know, for some reason the light has not gone through, so there may be certain small holes which we need to touch up. So once the screen is ready, the transparent portion of the frame is where the inks will go through and you have various uh, printing machines where the frames go on and you transfer this uh, ink onto the glass surface with something called a rubber squeezy. The rubber squeezy is essentially hard rubber at a particular angle which will force the ink uh, onto the screen and the areas where which are transparent, the ink will flow through onto the glass surface. The pressure, the speed and the angle of the print has to be consistent for a consistent print. The opening of the mesh has to be consistent for the consistent print. So we recommend using a machine. If you use a manual process, the speed of application and the pressure may vary. So you are not sure of the deposition of ink that you are making and the deposition may vary according to the pressure that is being applied. It is important to note that glass should be clean. After going through the entire process, if the glass is not clean, you will have problems when you are firing glass. Screen printing should be attached to a dryer as well. So the quicker you are able to dry the ink, the better results you will get. Now, if you have various sizes of glass uh, that you need to print, you need to go from a larger size to a smaller size. If you go from a smaller to a larger or you have a mixed up sizes, you will end up cleaning the screen many times and the more number of times you clean the screen, the screen will get damaged or it will take more time. So you go on for a larger size to a smaller size and this needs to be inbuilt into your system that the glasses that reach the printing process have to go in a particular sequence. The other thing that you need to take care of is that the printed side of the glass when it has to be clean, it doesn't have to have any glue. That means that the stickers that you are using or the labels that you are using to track the glass have to be on the non-printed side. Separators that are used in the process have to be without any gum or any glue and preferably on the non-coating side and the handling has to be with gloves. So uh, these are a few basic things that need to be done and you don't need to find out the hard way when your production suffers.